Okay, now we would like to take a look at actually calculating the physical cross product. So again, we're going to start with a vector r, position vector, which has x, y, and z components in general, and the, vec the force vector, which is going to have x, y, and z components. So if we start with the first component, so what, the one way of calculating the cross product is taking each component individually. So here's the x component of the r vector and now you can cross it respectively with each of the x, y, and z components of the force vector which would give you three terms. Next you could take the y component and again calculate them. So again here's r, y times fx and j cross i. And then lastly you take the third term, the z term of the position vector and you do that calculation. So now we're left with nine components of this product and now what you need to do is you need to evaluate all the respective cross products. So what you find out is that the i cross i, j cross j, and k cross k equals zero. That's because the if you have two vectors that are parallel to each other there is no cross product. The, the vectors are parallel, they don't cross each other, so there's no ability to cross one vector into the other, and we term the, and they end up producing what we would call zero. There is no direction uh, that's produced. <clears throat> now, all the other terms, we have two i terms, we have two j terms, we have two k terms. You collect those terms together, and you end up with the resultant of r cross f, which will again equal some general moment, and will have an x, y, and z components, because of course the scalar value of r, y times the scalar value of f, z minus the other two scalar components just give you a generalized number. All right, that's one way of calculating the cross product. Now, a second way of doing it is you can use the diagonal method which you, to implement it, you can start out with two additional rows and to get the i component, you take the positive term, which is going to be ry times fz, writing it here, and then you do the other diagonal in the other direction, and it's going to be minus rz fy. Now we do the j component, it's going to be rz fx minus rx fz, shown right here and then lastly we can do the k component which is going to be k times rx fy and we're going to subtract off of that ry fx and we show that here okay the third method for calculating it is probably the way you might have been shown in calculus 3 where we actually are going to talk about it being a straight 3 by 3 matrix and you're calculating the determinant so you're going to start with each term in the top row so in this case, you're going to take the uh, i term and you go ahead and cross out the two rows, the row and the column that's associated with that. And in this case, you're going to be left with a two by two matrix that's going to be the determinant. So um, you get i times the whatever value this determinant works out to being. Then the next term will be the j term and cross out its row and column, and that one comes in as a negative. So again, as you go across your determinants, it's going to be positive, negative, positive. Um, so in this case, you're left with an Rx, Rz, Fx, Fz. And lastly, you have your K term, cross out its column and row, and you're left with Rx, Ry, Fx, Fy. Now again, calculating the determinant of a two by two matrix is relatively straightforward. It's gonna be Ry times Fz minus Rz Fy. And likewise for the J, but again, you propagate the negative J down. So it's Rx Fz minus Rz Fx. And if you propagate this negative sign through, you'll get the exact same expressions that were shown in the previous two slides. All right. so any way of those that you want to do with it or what you might want to end up doing is just figuring out how to how to calculate a three by three determinant using your calculators and we can take a look at that in class all right so let's take a look at one quick example here we have a generalized force vector uh, going 
along a line that points from point B to point C, and the force is a magnitude of 150 newtons. The point of interest that we're interested in what this force, how this force is going to create a moment is about point A. And here's the position vector going from point A to point B. So you can think of this as some large block for all intents and purposes. And the force vector is applied to point B of the block. And we're curious at what's going to happen around point A. So without going through the math here too much, the vector from RA to B is minus 3 in the I, plus 5 in the J, and plus 3 in the K. Calculating the uh, unit vector going from B to C and multiplying it through by 150 newtons, we get the total vector here. So now you want to fabulate uh, uh, evaluate the cross product. So here's the moment about point A is going to equal to R cross F. So it's minus 3, 5, and 3, negative 49, 73, and negative 122. So we go to the last slide and actually look at the actual calculation. So again, depending on which way you'd want to do it, but remember it's not 3, it's negative 3. So you do, uh, for instance here, the way I would do my cross product, or actually just do it this way, and you're left with 5 times negative 122 minus 3 times 73. Now you can do your J components. Uh, sorry, J. So it's going to be negative 3 times... Um, Sorry, J. Oh, so it's neg <laughs> negative 3 times negative 122, but that's negative because the negative sign propagates through, and then it's uh, 3 times negative 49 positive, and so on. Anyway, you end up with uh, the general moment vector, the moment about point A, has a negative I component, a negative J component, and a positive Z component. So we can take a look at it here. Oh, I have the Z component already displayed. But there's your negative X component, negative Y component, positive Z component, and there's the moment vector, the moment vector about point A. So physically what's happening is that if you put an axis through point A, aligned along the vector defined by the moment about A, that is how this point would want to, this is how this block would want to rotate. So again, take the fingers of your uh, right hands and put your thumb along the vector MA and your fingers will curl in the direction that this vector is going to try to cause the block to rotate in. All right, so we can take a look at it in a, uh, using a couple examples that I'll want you to work out. So here's problem three. So in this particular case, you have two force vectors that are coincident at point A. So you can add these two together vectorially to get a resultant and then calculate the R from point O to point A cross with that resultant, and that'll get you the moment about point O. For this particular problem, problem four, you have two force vectors, but they're not coincident. So to get the total moment about point O, you're going to have to calculate R, which is from O to point A, crossed with this vector FA, right? Because remember, you're going from the, from the point of rotation to the point of application of the force. All right, and then this force, the line of this force vector goes through. And now you're, again, you're going to go from the point of application, from the point of rotation O to the point of application of the force. That'll give you R O B, and you're going to cross that with F B. Now, this is, these are all, both going to produce two moments about point O, and you can vectorially add those together. Alrighty, so uh, if you have any questions, I'll be available to answer them, but at least try to work through these problems. Alrighty.